This is the plaintiff, Shante McMillian. She says she rented two storage units at the defendant's facility and $5,000 worth of her precious belongings were stolen. Security footage shows the defendant going into her unit. The cops got some of it back, but she's still out some big ticket items. That's why she's here suing the thief for the $5,000 she's owed. This is the defendant, Jennifer Vanenberg. She says she thought the plaintiff's things were abandoned junk and she took them to donate them. Many times, people leave things in the hall they don't want to throw away, and she collects that stuff to donate. The plaintiff's belongings look like junk to her. She got them back, and now the woman's coming up with a new list of things she's making up just in order to cash in. She's accused of stealing. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $5,000 for stolen sneakers plus pain and suffering. All parties, please raise your right hand. Be seated, come to order. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, in. Shante McMillian? Hi, yes. Hi. You're suing Jennifer Vandenberg? Yes. For $5,000 in items that you say she stole from your storage unit. You are counterclaiming against her items you say she stole from your car and pain and suffering because you got fired from the storage unit. What happened? I moved my stuff in storage. Mind you, I've been with this storage unit for over 15 years. So I had came to storage to bring more belongings to my storage space. So as I opened my storage door, I noticed that my TVs was gone. So as soon as I noticed the TVs was gone, I called... How many TVs? Um, one TV. One TV. Yeah. And Jennifer, she was the um, person over the um, office, so I asked her, you know, somebody broke into my storage space. I was like, is it possible that I can view the camera of the days, you know, that I left stuff in storage? So she told me, oh, well, you're not gonna be able to view every day, you know, that was, and I said, why I can't view every day? I wanna know, cause somebody went in my storage and stole my stuff out of storage and I wanna know what was taken. So she prolonged it or whatever, it really didn't wanna show me the cameras, so she pulled up and kept rolling on this certain day. So she didn't want to pull up the day that I wanted to see. So I was like, okay, I went outside. I called Cheektawaga police. But in the midst of me going outside, calling the Cheektawaga police, her van was parked outside. As I'm walking by her van, I see my boxes of shoes and a wedding dress in her vehicle. So I go back in the office. So Wait, I said- Wait, back it up. Your wedding dress? I was in a wedding before. Okay. Oh, meaning a bridesmaid's yeah, dress? Yeah, bridesmaid's so dress. So you actually see the bridesmaid's in dress her in her vehicle. Yep. So you see it, and then what do you do? I seen it, so I came back in the office and was viewing more days. She was showing more days or whatever. Did you mention to her I saw stuff in your car? No, I didn't mention to her because I was waiting for the police to get there. I didn't oh, even want her to know. Oh, because you had called the police and yeah, you didn't I had already off. called the police. Good I was move. just waiting right, for them to on. come or whatever. So I went in, she was showing me some pictures or whatever, and at the midst of that, Take the police... Take this hair and move it because I like to see the eyes okay. of the people I'm talking to. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. And in the midst of that, the police pulled up. And the police came in, they questioned her or whatever, asked her, you know, I told the police officer, I said, some of my belongings is in her vehicle. So he goes back in, he tells me to stay outside. He goes back in and question her about the stuff that's in the vehicles. And he asked her, well, what size shoe do you wear? And she said a size seven. And he said, well, them shoes in the car is a size eight and eight and a half and nine. Some of my shoes is different sizes. Is there a police report? Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me see it. Did she get arrested? Yes, she did. She was arrested that day. And uh, are charges pending against you? Um, yes, they are. They took it down from a felony down to a misdemeanor. My attorney mm -hmm. filed for motions. So it's pending still? Yes. According to the police, you tell the police that everything in your car is yours. No, I did not That's tell what they them. say you did. That's not what I said, though, and that's why I filed a complaint against the police department. Well, I have a question for you. Why are her belongings in your car? I didn't know that they were her belongings. In Who did you think they were? I didn't know whose they were. They were left outside of the storage space. She had never secured the space. What does that mean? Secured? That means she never put a lock on the space. Oh, so she that... deserves to have her stuff stolen. <laughs> did you not put a lock on the space? It wasn't a lock on there, but when you have a secure... But secure what? Why wouldn't you lock it? 
I was because I was coming back and Cause forth. Because you're so lazy, you don't want to unlock it when you come back. So you helped yourself to her stuff? No, her stuff. There was actually a. How do you cart. know that there's no lock on her thing? Because I went through and did a lock check that my store manager failed to do. And I noticed there were actually, there was two bags on a cart and there were bags, I don't wanna say grocery bags, but they were plastic bags about this high. And then there was, I didn't know it was a made, like a maid of honor dress or gown or whatnot. It was, I thought it was like a sheet or something. And then the TV was kind of stuck up against there looking as if somebody what just What time of the day it. or night did you find that stuff there? This stuff, I do my rounds early in the morning and then before I leave. So around 9, around 9.15. And I double checked everything at quarter to 6. And I told my fiance at that time whatever was still in that sp in the corner where I found all the all that property to dispose of it. There was also on Wait, the you told your fiance to dispose of it. What does that mean? What does your fiance well, have to do with it? Because he did you take this you the, so some stuff is in the car and did you take some stuff home? There was a TV, but he you took takes, a TV home. He t no, he does the demolition of the TVs or something because our trash removal does not. Look at, up Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Yes. So the bottom line is her stuff was found in your car and her stuff was found in your home. Right? That's yeah. what. Yeah. How are you going to how are you going to dress that up? How are you going to well, dress saying, that up? I don't know you if got the fired stuff, because of this, right? I don't know if the stuff in my car Why was Why was hers? it in your home? Why was her TV in your home? Because if my store manager needs a TV picked up if somebody left it in his space, my fiance would pick it up for the storage So facility. you can help yourself to any TV. No, and he could dispose of it. Really? And did you dispose of it or was it just in your house? It was actually just, I was going to dispose of it, but ah, it was. Ah, and you were going to dispose of it. So what was I the stuff? I don't need any more La Lady, lady, just listen to me. Why is the stuff in your possession? If somebody leaves something lying around, there needs to be a protocol at your business where you're supposed to take abandoned property and put it in a certain place where abandoned property goes. Why is it you get to help yourself to stuff? There because isn't then no what, we, what that leads itself to is you seeing where there's no locks, picking it up, seeing it unlocked, and helping yourself to whatever you want, which is apparently how Uncle Bob felt about it because you got canned, didn't you? You got fired because of this, right? Yes, I did. Yes, you did. So this whole well, we're holding it for the customer because the customer <laughs> might be able to come and get it later. So we're just holding, that stuff is all a bunch of doo-doo. No, I donate. Yeah. Oh, you donate. Oh, what, right about the time that you're serving soup in the soup kitchen, is it? Because it really just sounds like you're a thief. Okay? No, I don't steal. And I was not charged well, except with for stealing. That you, what did you get charged with? I got charged with possession of stolen property. Oh. That's, that's just easier to prove is all. They don't need to prove you stole it. They just need to prove it's stolen and you had it. So that's why they charge you with that. Because it's in your car and in your house. So, and according to the cops, you're telling them that's your stuff in the car, which is critical because it means that you were lying, which means that you have mental guilt, okay? Because if there's anybody who's gonna buy your story at trial, they're not gonna buy it if the police officer testifies this way, which is why you filed a complaint against a police officer. Right. Now, let's you and I talk. How long after this happens do you come up with this little um, scenario? I had eight pairs of Ugg boots totaling $1,400, one Louis Vuitton bag, a Gucci bag. What? See how people are giggling when they're hearing me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and miscellaneous clothing, coats, fur vests, pink sweatsuits, sneakers, um, to the tune of $5,000. How, how is it that that happened, that all of a sudden you realize after the police are gone, after the report is filed, after the stuff is returned to you, oh, you know what? I had a Gucci. Who has a Gucci and a Louis Vuitton bag and puts them in storage instead of putting them in their own? How much space, it was in a, it was how in much a space does a Louis Vuitton bag take? <laughs> and what kind of bags do you have in your own closet that the Louis Vuitton and the Gucci have to be in storage? Tell me about that. Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. Are people honest by nature? Yes, I'd like to say yes. I'd like to think so. You'd like to think so, but do you think so? <clears throat> Not everybody. I didn't say everybody. Generally, if you had to generalize, are people honest or not? 
maybe. I don't know. Oh boy, you're not, nobody's willing to take a stand here. Yes, people are. And if they're not, they should be. Right, but again, how, is it, okay, I get it. Going inside the courtroom. All my purses is in bins. All my stuff is in bins. So it was in bins. She took bins and stuff. Why she is it that you don't have two designer purses that are worth two grand? Why wouldn't you just have those with you of all things to put in storage? Why would you? I put, was moving. Who I, does that? I was who moving, that? so I had to oh, move right away. So you so had I put a two thousand dollar. You had a thousand dollar Louis Vuitton bag and a thousand dollar Gucci bag, and you left it unlocked. I, it was in storage. You in sure bin. you're not just conveniently coming up with you no, know extra I'm not. stuff? Because no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I know it was uh -huh. taken, and I know it was in the bin. Taken, so. not taken. Taken. Did you ever report any of this to the police? No. Why wouldn't that be the first thing you look for? I didn't. I mean, I just went through the bins. I noticed that my bins was missing and the purses was in the bins. So. Now you have a counterclaim against her for five thousand dollars for stolen items and pain and suffering. Tell me about that. Um, I had in the back no, of my vehicle, I spent $540 that weekend on my fiance. I bought him a pair of Nike cleats. I also bought him a pair of Nike boots to work in. And I also bought him a pair of Nike sneakers. And I spent a total of $540. She took that box with her as she was helping herself to the other items in my vehicle. So you'd like to... <laughs> what did, the, did you tell the police that? Yeah. And what He's the police like, well, you should have thought about that before you stole her property. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I didn't... Technically, I didn't steal her property, but it is what it is, but, yeah. All right, so now, but what... So the $540 for the Nikes, did you take any of her Nikes? No, I okay, didn't. Okay, there we go. All right, and then the pain and suffering. <laughs> What's the pain and suffering for? After I was in the police vehicle for two and a half hours, they refused me medical treatment. They were sitting there lollygagging with her. Why did you need medical her? treatment? Because I was having a panic attack and I was hyperventilating. Okay. And after that, I have not been the same. I hope not. <laughs> so she should pay you five grand because you got arrested for being in possession of stuff that was stolen. I didn't know it was stolen. You can tell that to the judge or the jury that's going to prosecute, right. that's going to hear right. your case. And I will. But why does she owe you money? She got stuff stolen and finds it in your car, and the police find the TV and in I your home. And I had stuff stolen. What did she, why does she owe you five grand in pain and suffering? Yeah, getting arrested is very inconvenient. As for it, to all quote, the lies. To quote a very wise man, you should have thought about that before you, you know, For all the lies. Stuff. I but, mean, it took her But three she's months. not lying. It took she her has three stolen months. stuff. And it got found in your car and your apartment. So about that, she's not lying. So how would she owe you five grand? Because you were inconvenienced because you were hyperventilating. No, I'm in a talking police about because of the additional lies. So I need to have some kind of proof that this stuff was in there. Can you come up with any proof that this stuff was in there? For example, it would make me feel better if I saw an amended police report where literally, you know, a few hours later, you called the cops and told them about that or next day or two days later. Because just like I am skeptical of her, I have to be skeptical of every litigant okay. and I have to force litigants to prove it. So okay. again, I ask you, is there an inventory sheet when you first put your stuff in? Is there some, some kind of, of proof somewhere that you had Gucci and Louis Vuitton and eight pairs of Ugg boots in storage. I don't have it with me, but it's in well, office. Well, today is the day of the trial. So today would be the day to have it with you. Okay, so on your lawsuit against her, zero. And on her lawsuit against you, double zero. Okay, that's my verdict, folks. Take care. Well, neither party wins in this case. Ms. Vandenberg is coming out of the courtroom right now. Obviously, the judge didn't believe you. It was kind of a rough day for you, you here. You know what? It doesn't matter what matters. It's over. It's over and done with. And it's I over here, but you still have a court case pending against you, and right? And that, too, will be cleared. My name will be cleared. You're sure? I'm positive on that one. Okay. Well, good luck. All Thank right. you. Thank you very much. You must sign some documents out that way. Ms. McMillian, you're on your way out of the courtroom. Obviously, you know, we say all the time on here, evidence is critical. If you can't prove it, you can't win it. You, that's, that's what killed you here. You know that? I don't have anything to say. No? no? Nothing? Nothing. Okay. Well, the door is that way. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Harvey? 
You know, Doug, I, I, as a rule, I think you gotta, if, if somebody does you wrong or takes your property, you gotta document it, and you gotta document it as soon as possible. That will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.